Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson we're going to go a little deeper into friction. So friction depends on two main factors. The first one is the amount by which the object is digging into the ground. Now typically heavier objects are going to dig into the ground more than lighter objects. So for now I'm going to call it the mass of the objects. And I mean, think about it. It's obvious. Would you rather push this mini or would you rather push a truck? I mean, hopefully you never have to push any of them, but if you had the choice, I mean, it's a lot easier to push the mini. So the mass of the object is going to be one big factor that we need to look at. The next one is going to be the type of surface that you are moving across. For example, it's easier to slide ice skates on ice than it is to slide a piece of rubber over a concrete floor. And so what's nice is that scientists have done experiments and they have given us a table of values that we can use depending on the type of surface. Have a look here. I'll explain a little later about the S and the K. Remember that's static and kinetic. But for example, if you have a piece of wood and you want to slide it across a piece of wood, then the value you would use would be between 0 0.25 and 0 0.5. Then the kinetic, which will always be a little bit lower because kinetic, it's easier to move things once they are moving, so that's 0 0.2. Then for example, if you have a piece of ice and you slide it across a piece of ice, then it's 0 0.1 or 0 0.03, and then you've got rubber on concrete, and then you've got rubber on concrete when the concrete is wet. And so you see, notice that there's always two things. Look here, for each of them it says metal on metal, wax wood on dry snow, waxed wood on, Tevlon on. The reason for that is that you need to know about both surfaces. You need to know, for example, the table, and you need to know what the box is made of. And so the two main components, remember it's not actually going to be called mass, it's something else, but mass is a good way to think about it for now. So you need to think about how big or heavy the object is, and you also need to think about the surface and the object's material, so what the materials are made of. So if you can take, if you want to find friction, then the formula is the following. So friction is equal to the mass part multiplied by the surface part. So this here is your normal force, and that's what we're going to use in the place of mass. And then this here is those values that they gave you on their table, and that's got to do with the surfaces. Now, remember, there are two types of friction, static, kinetic. And so here they are, static friction, object is not moving. I'll explain this formula now, and then kinetic friction is when the object is moving. So the K is just for kinetic, and the F is for friction, so it's friction with force of kinetic. Then the normal force, which we've got over here as well, sorry, that should be a capital N, whoops. And then I've got the coefficient over here, which is that one, and then the K just stands for kinetic. Now, why do I have Fs max here? So remember in the previous lesson, we said that friction increases up to a point and then it will go into the kinetic region. Now the kinetic region stays constant, and so it makes sense that we can calculate it with that formula over there. Now, with static, this formula can only calculate this point over here. This is so important, guys. It can only calculate that point. Remember in the previous lesson where we said that that maximum point was 17 newtons? Well, you would calculate that using this formula. If you exerted a force of 5 newtons on that object, then you wouldn't need a formula to calculate friction. Why? Because you would know from using this formula that the maximum friction is 17 newtons, and so if your applied force is 5 newtons, then your friction force has to be 5 newtons because it balances out. So you don't need a formula when you are anywhere over here. But you, you do need a formula to know what this value is, and that's where you use this one over here. And then for anywhere over here, you just use this formula. So, do you guys think you understand friction? Well, here's a question. It says that this object is initially not moving. A person then exerts a force as shown, so there's a 3 Newton force. Will the object move? So the first thing you need to understand, or what you need to first work out, is the maximum static friction that that object has. So we use this formula over here. And so the normal force, well let's have a look at that. We know that the normal force 
acts upwards like that and gravity acts downwards and so in this kind of example those two are going to be the same it won't always be like that but I'll I'll explain that in later lessons so we know that the force of gravity is equal to mg which is equal to 5 multiplied by 9.8 which is 49 newtons so therefore your normal force is also going to be 49 newtons remember this is gravity and this is your normal force so then we can work out the fs max by saying 49 multiplied by the static coefficient which is 0 0.2 and that's going to give us 9.8 newtons. That means that the maximum friction force for this object when not when it's not moving is 9.8. So if you come along with your 3 newton force, that object is not going to move. So how much will the friction be then? Well, if you said 9.8, guys, you need to be careful. Remember, if someone exerts a force of 3 newtons, then the force of friction on the object will also be 3 newtons, so that it doesn't move. Because if the force of friction is 9.8, then technically the object should start moving to the left. So we're probably somewhere here on the diagram. So if you wanted that object to start moving, you would have to go beyond 9.8. If the person extends or increases the force to 12 newtons, then the object will start moving because the maximum friction that that object can have, remember friction is the thing that's trying to stop the object from moving, the maximum for this system is only 9.8. So if you exert 12 newtons, then you can cause the object to move. So then what would the friction be? If you said 9.8, guys, you need to be careful because if the object is now moving, now we are operating on in the kinetic region. So now we need to come and use this formula, which tells us that the friction force then is equal to the normal force, which we already worked out as 49, multiplied by the kinetic coefficient, which is 0, 0,1, and that's only 4,9 newtons. And so you need to be careful when to use what kind of friction. So step one is always to work out what is the maximum static? So what is the maximum friction that this object can have before it starts moving? And that's this one over here, which you calculate using this formula. If your force applied is larger than that, then you slip into kinetic. And so that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching.